We were approached by a client who had bought a chalet building built on stilts on an island uh, in the River Thames in Marlow. The old flood level that it was designed to is insufficient, so the building actually needs to be raised higher than it is at the moment. Because it's in a conservation area, and the planners are saying that we can't raise the building any higher, so we're sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place. We even looked at a floating property, um, but again, it's very difficult to do that, to build something into the river course because it's not your land, so you have to get other consents for it. And then we realised that the third approach to it would be to actually create what we call an amphibious home, which is a home that can float when it needs to. So as the water level rises, you can see that we've developed what we call a kind of intuitive landscape, whereby uh, it's terraced at different levels, so you can see the water, the flood water coming up. So as the water level encroaches over this point, you can see over the patio, then the building will start to slowly move. And at this point, the, the wet dock's actually filled with water, so the whole building starts to go with it. We're working on sort of very simple kind of Archimedes principles, so we know that they've been around for a long time and they will work. It's a very heavy building, very stable, built on a concrete base, and it's a little bit like a boat hull. The building is guided on these posts. Those are actually called dolphins, unusually, and they, a lot of it is, is, is borrowed from marine technologies. Historically, we've always tried to defend against flooding. The normal approach has been, we'll build a wall. Can we afford to keep doing this? What if we get it wrong? We look at examples, you know, for example, in New Orleans, you know, where it did have flood walls, it had all the levees, but they collapsed or overtopped. Again, you know, the same thing happened in the tsunami in Japan. And you see this you know, recurring across the world that actually those sort of engineering solutions are not the ones which are going to provide us a long-term robust answer to climate change. This is a design that we developed for a large regeneration area right along the side of the River Seine you can see here, downstream from Paris. And what we've developed is a kind of phase plan where you can see a lot of landscape uh, elements into this that are actually designed to work with the water to allow the flood water flow through areas that we're less concerned about. So parkland, landscaping space, even some streets. We've created a kind of blue-green park which actually for the majority of the time is green but at certain times it can actually design to tolerate and absorb water so reducing the amount of rainfall that affects the surrounding areas. We're sort of looking at a shift in thinking towards the idea of what we call non-defensive uh, flood risk. So it's actually about living with water. We look at that from a positive side of things, actually how flood risk can actually generate better architecture and better planning. So we see water as an asset. Instead of it being a foe, uh, we actually see it as a, as a friend. 